let's uh, look at traditional architectures traditional architectures usually start small and simple with just a couple of systems let's say system a and system b if the systems require to exchange a data at real time then we have a point to point integration between the systems where one system can get the data from the other system this is usually done via rest or soap services over http protocol if the systems need to exchange data at non real time then we either have an async integration between the systems using message brokers or have a batch process which queries the data from one system's database and puts to the other system's database most architectures also have a data warehouse or data lake where data is transformed and put to from which reporting and analytics are run the data is transferred from the source databases to the data lake via etl processes or batch processes etl stands for extract transform and load now let's say we add a new system system c to our architecture we now have to build a new etl or batch process to transfer the data from system c to the data lake let's say system b requires real time data from system c and system c exposes only soap web services we now have to build a point to point integration between system b and system c using soap services over http protocol also let's say system a requires data from system c but not in real time we now have to build an async process between system a and system c using mq or a batch process so to summarize there are three main kinds of integrations in traditional architectures for real time data we have point to point integrations using protocols over http such as rest soap and grpc for non real time data we have async integrations using message brokers such as ibm mq rabbit mq or active mq ftp for exchanging files or batch processes that usually use jdbc or odbc to manage data for data warehousing our needs we have etl or batch processes that extract transform and load data to data warehouses or a data lake this is usually done for reporting and analytics so let's see what the problems are with traditional architectures as we can see from the slide as we add more systems the number and complexity of integrations increase exponentially we have to manage and support numerous integration methods like http rest soap tcp ftp jdbc mq and so on we have to manage and support numerous data formats like binary csv json avro xml and so on overall the architecture becomes brittle with multiple points of failure it becomes less scalable and less manageable so hope you found this video useful and if you want to check out the course the link to the course is provided in the description below visit our website interviewgrid.com where you will find tutorials courses and interview questions on a wide variety of subjects and topics finally thank you and do not forget to subscribe to this channel since we will be posting new videos similar to this video every week